Te saluda Larry Rubin. Yo soy el presidente de la American Society. Esta organización fue fundada en 1942, hace 78 años, por el entonces embajador de Estados Unidos en México, George S. Messersmith, y líderes de la comunidad americana. Hoy, el embajador sigue siendo nuestro presidente honorario y tenemos el agrado de que sea Christopher Lano. De igual forma, la comunidad son dos millones de norteamericanos, representamos a miles de empresas generando millones de empleos y a cientos de asociaciones no lucrativas apoyando a mexicanos y mexicanas. Esta organización tiene como objetivo unir a mexicanos y americanos, promover valores norteamericanos y obviamente los intereses de Estados Unidos en México que favorezcan a mexicanos y estadounidenses a su vez. De igual forma, esto no podía ser posible sin, sin el agradecimiento particular y el apoyo de aliados como 3M, EY, Dow, Constellation Brands y La Moderna. Te invitamos a que escuches con Traveling with Debbie a Debbie Bear, una miembro del Consejo Directivo de la American Society, pero también una gran conocedora de lujos, destinos, vinos y demás eh, maravillas a, la, a las que Debbie eh, pues conoce a profundidad. Y con eso dicho, vamos a darle una gran bienvenida a Debbie Bear. Hola, queridos amigos, qué gusto, qué placer estar con ustedes, como siempre, en Vinos y Destinos. Y hoy tengo un invitado muy especial. Y les platico. En los Balloni Hotels, eh, y se los voy a decir ya en inglés para ya formar parte de, de, de lo que estamos platicando. The Balloni Hotels are private residences, elegant, intimate, open and vibrant. And the people who work there are meticulous about every detail. Everything is arranged to put the guest at the heart of an authentic, personal, and exquisitely Italian experience that will live very long in the memory. And over the years, the brand has developed a concept of luxury embodied in a personalized service where the guests always feel comfortable and their daily needs are taken care of throughout through their stay, with sensitivity to both their culture of origin and their individual tastes and preferences. Each hotel of this Balioni collection has its own story, a symbolic relationship with the local culture and language, and while the surrounding influence the style, it is Balioni personality that lends the hospitality its unmistakable hallmark of quality. Balioni hotels now include seven exclusive hotels, most in historic buildings, in the center of desirable travel destination, four are in Italy, in Milan, Venice, Florence, and Rome, and they all mark this sophisticated, beautiful style. And with me today, Gian Matteo Sampieri, the director of the Baglioni Hotel in Venice. What a pleasure to be with you. It's a privilege for us. And uh, we are extremely honored to be here. Grazie. Thank you for, for letting us have this invitation. And uh, it's, uh, as said, a pleasure and a privilege to share with you this incredible destination, which is Venice and this property, which has a, an incredible story back uh, more than uh, uh, nine centuries. And uh, if there is time, we will talk something more about that. But also, we have to present the Baglioni Hotels and the chain before that. All these beautiful collections of hotels. And Gian Matteo, tell me about you. You're, you were born there. Uh, how come you started in the hotel business? Because <laughs> I know you have passion for what you do. I've been reading about you, and it's fascinating to know what you've been doing in, in the hotel business. Well, I should say I'm native. But be careful, Venetians, my friends, they will not allow me to say that since I was born on the other side of the bridge that connects Venezia from the mainland. Oh, even, even though the city is the same and the town hall is the same. Uh, so there is the city from the sea and the city from the land. And uh, uh, when I was 13, uh, I started to attend uh, uh, a tourist uh, uh, institute here in Venezia. And it has been in incredible hate. I couldn't stand this city. It was horrible because the, the way was so long. I had to wake very early in the morning and I was arriving at home exhausted. But certainly it has uh, got its own value because uh, year after year, 
this hate has been transformed into love for, and passion for this city. And, uh, you know, I started in small hotels, then immediately in luxury hotels. And uh, since more than 11 years, I'm uh, proudly, I should say, privileged to be the general manager of this uh, incredible property. Here at my shoulder, we have an incredible example of what you could see inside this uh, uh, this building uh, where everything is uh, uh, talks about history and the great history of the Serenissima Republic and uh, the beauty and the richness, the fast and the opulence of the Venetians' uh, uh, merchants and nobility. And uh, this palace reflects all the story and all uh, the great uh, and important uh, uh, past that, uh, that nowadays Anyone who comes inside here can uh, certainly breathe and experience. And this is beautiful to, to listen to you. And Baglioni Hotel Luna is situated in the entrance to the Piazza San Marco in Venice. Imagine the oh, yes. center of the Venetian art history and origin of the city spirit. And, and it's interesting, I was reading, and you'll tell us more, in 1811-1807, the Knights Templar were given building in land in Venice by the Archbishop of Ravenna and on the fervent pilgrims to the Holy Land. And the Templary had established excellent relations with the city-state, which was at the time the nexus of trade between Europe and the Orient. One of the gifted properties was the present-day location of Baglioni Hotel Luna. And initially, the built a with were later expanded into a church and with room in the, for the Templars as they use it to wait passages of the Venetian gallery. So that's very interesting. Tell us more about this history and what does Luna mean? Uh, the history is extremely rich. So we try to sensitize that uh, since 1118, the Knight Templar has got this property right in this location. There was a hosting place for pilgrims bound to Holy Lands, but the Knights Templars were having four different seats here in Venezia. And you know, Venice at the time was the door, was a sort of a passage, safe, very safe passage to the Holy Land, to the Silk Road, to the Spices Road that led at the time down to Katai, to China. And so nowadays, it reflects all this story. Uh, this place was extremely important because it has been shelter for important uh, ambassadors, uh, counselors that were heading to the Holy Land and they were uh, on a safe situation, as a matter of fact, being hosted to the Knight Templars. Knight Templar were born soon after the very first crusade, all right, in order to be the guardians of the Jerusalem temple yeah. and in order to be the very, the very guardians and the very, uh, the, uh, yes, the very, the, the very guards of the holy and the very first church of Christ, especially from Holy Mary, the mother of Christ. And that's the great meaning that comes from the symbols, which is the moon, the full moon. And in, during the medieval times, the half moon of the Ottoman Emperor, okay, of the Muslim wars was already uh, uh, in shape, was already a symbol. The full moon becomes the symbols of Christianity, becomes the symbols of Mary, and right, the, uh, uh, the knights, the the Templar Knights were, uh, first of all, uh, uh, extremely uh, fond about uh, the, the history of the Mother of Christ. Their richness was so, in, so great and so powerful. They, they were extremely powerful at a certain point. Uh, but this is another story. <laughs> <laughs> It's beautiful. Yes, 13, 13, 12, with great success, they have been uh, uh, excommunicated on a very wrong way um, from uh, Pope Clement V. Low Pope Clement V was uh, in a real difficulty because he was not in Rome, he was in, uh, in Lyon, he was in, uh, in France, uh, and uh, he was certainly under the great power, psychological power also of uh, 
Philip Le Beau, Philippe il Bello, the king of France, and for, from which uh, everything was, was born. Um, soon after the Knight Templars, uh, the Knights of Jerusalem then got the property and so on and so forth with other religions up to uh, nowadays. Uh, when uh, uh, Mr. Napoleon at Bonaparte, and certainly we have uh, been heard of him uh, and his uh, uh, incredible uh, campaign of conquering land all around uh, Europe, he has been conquering Venice as well. He has been the one who put a stop to the Serenissima Republic in May 12, uh, 1797. He has been the one who uh, demolished more than 40 churches in this uh, city of representing a high level of Christianity. No, there are a lot of saints all around named in every single corner, in every single stone, in every single island. And... Uh, uh, he demolished also the church that was right here, where nowadays we have the hall and the, and the restaurant. And this church was entitled to Holy Mary. Holy Mary on the field, with a Venetian archaical name translated in English is Holy Mary on the field, because you have to know that there were many green grasses around the little island of Venezia at the time. Uh, so from that time, then uh, we can see the palace as it is nowadays. But the hosting place start already from the Templar Knights. And so we certainly might say very proudly that this is uh, for sure the very first hosting place, uh, the oldest hosting place still existing in Venezia. Wow, that's so beautiful. And, and, and let's talk about this present day, like Marco Polo ballroom that you have in the Baglioni Hotel, Luna's first floor, which is completely frescoed with allegorical scenes, uh, talking about all those healthy pleasures uh, that with the master pupil of Tiepolo, the foremost of the 1700s in Venice. And Tiepolo later actually decorated the Royal Palace in Madrid and the Winter Palace in San Petersburg. And Baglione de Luna is home to exquisite art, from French painting circa 1700 to Murano glass, Limoges porcelain, to, to all this uh, making that you have of art in the hotel these days. Tell us more about how it's going today with uh, San Giorgio, San Sovino, Giorgio, Tiziano, all those beautiful, splendid suites that you have in the Baglioni. Entering this palace is like to be in your noble home in Venezia, wow. even if just for a weekend. Huh? Mm -hmm. This is how we wish to let our guests feel when entering in our house. Uh, entering in here is uh, a jump back into second half 1700, uh, especially for the Marco Polo ballroom, which, which is completely original as it has been built at that time, wow. uh, respecting and reflecting uh, the, the, the decoration and the fashion of that time. So the pavement, uh, which is done in Terrazzo Veneziano, all the stuccos on the floor, on the walls, uh, and especially the frescoes on the ceiling that has been uh, uh, done from the Tiepolo pupils. You know, Tiepolo was, uh, he was like uh, an, a, great, uh, a great brand nowadays, and so he was having his own bottega, his own shop, with a lot of uh, guys uh, going around and trying to learn and apprentice uh, all the, 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 the great novelty of this art. And these pupils, they did have these frescoes. And nowadays they do reflect the, not only the fashion of the time, but also the, the great messages of, uh, of, of, of that time. But you should come over here and be extremely sensible about that because there is not only that, there is also Venice, the atmosphere, the sky, and the and all this game of lights, because, you know, we also have the lagoon that reflects the light of the sun. And so in every single moment of the day, on a sunny day, we do have different rays, different light, and different game of lights. And this is extraordinary sort of magic. On top of this, you can easily get lost. You know, uh, it's, it, we used to say that when you come to Venice and when you visit this city, you are you jump into a different dimension uh, related to time and, and, and space, okay? Uh, 
Uh, here we can certainly say that uh, you are in a different dimension in terms of time and space because you not only get lost, but you certainly lose the meaning of times. The world is lost. Yes. You, are, yes. you are somewhere else. In the uh, people, of, people of the past who has attended this place, uh, and we can name Igor Stravinsky, Ezra Pound, uh, uh, in recent time, Anthony Quinn, <laughs> François Mitterrand, uh, Marcel Proust, okay? Herman S., uh, Death in Venice, uh, and the greatest uh, uh, story that has been talked about, uh, the Lido and its incredible beach. And uh, they all talk about some mystic, some magic in terms of uh, the, uh, the dimension that you feel inside this, uh, this, this part of the world. And being in this city, having the lagoon, having uh, this light that reflects on that and so keeps you really away from uh, uh, the, the regular way that we are used in our city to live uh, on a daily basis. Um, and so it's extremely easy not only to get lost, but to experience uh, this sort of, uh, oh my God, where I am at the moment. Uh, <laughs> it even happens to me and to my friends whenever we go around, uh, okay, uh, somewhere in the hidden corners, all right? And this is exactly the philosophy of Marcel Proust that he has been uh, widely expressed in his Le Temps Perdu, the lost time, but also the retrovated time, the, the time that you may find back again, okay, finding yourself in Venice. He was, he was putting the cookies in, in, in the tea, and that took him back to, to <laughs> those times. Uh, and, and that's what happens for sure here, because I, I, that's what I study, art of history and philosophy. So I had to read all Marcel book, books, you know, Marcel Proust. And, and it's so beautiful when something that you're seeing or touching or listening to or maybe testing just takes you back to a different moment in your life. And I'm sure that happens in the beautiful Baglioni Luna. And also, I know like it's, it's the atmosphere that, that you have there that, that makes you feel in different place, in different time. At the restaurant Canoa, that it's like a, in a dining room in this uh, magnificent uh, French still life from the 1700s, that it gets you this uh, special feeling with the chef uh, Massimo Livan, right? Uh, mm -hmm. the, the, this creation and, and super wine list. We were talking about uh, good drinks in those moments. So tell us about those feelings and the food and the drinks that we can enjoy in the beautiful Baglioni in the Luna Hotel in, in, in Venice. Uh, Debbie, our Ristorante Canova reflects uh, uh, the Veneto region uh, way of cooking and, uh, and the offer of dishes. Uh, first of all, you know, we have uh, the lagoon with uh, such a great variety and richness of fish. And so uh, this is a reflection of what we find in, uh, in our dishes, which is, uh, uh, which is in our cart and which, of course, makes so rich our uh, our identity also in a culinary way. Uh, you know, as soon as uh, the, the Venetian uh, 16 centuries ago started to come to Venice, they were simply agriculture, but they discovered that this lagoon was so rich of fish that they immediately got the opportunity to have them both, either meat or fish in their table. And so the, the, the rich, the, uh, afterward, the rich merchants they want almost everything that was edible around this world that was coming from abroad, that was either uh, kept from, uh, from, from this land. But especially in here, you know, we, uh, we have almost everything in this region. We have the sea, we have the lagoon, which is one of the widest humid areas. We have uh, the Padana Plain. We have hills with incredible Prosecco, UNESCO area and a lot of mushrooms, and so we have the Dolomites, which is also another UNESCO area, uh, beautiful, which is two and a half hour drive from here. We also have the lake, the Lake of Garda, which is the, the biggest uh, Italian lake, which is extremely uh, important because try to figure that only in the Garda Lake we have either olives and lemon, which is the northest side where you can cultivate these important plants, which is... And we have lots of beautiful grapes to make good wine. As well, as well, as well. And you know, uh, 
in Italy, we have a lot of wines, and uh, it's said that uh, 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 we know that Italy is number one uh, in terms of wine production in the world uh, because we have winery and vineyards everywhere, almost everywhere. Well, we very few. actually from Piemonte to Sicily, it's a yes. winery. It's all yes. wine and, wine and good food, yes. But even very few, even very few Italian knows that northeast of northeast of Italy is the top producer, not in quality, but in quantity. Of course, is the highest production, and it's so sad that we also have been grown up drinking wine and grappa and grappa as well, which is very well distilled, right in this Veneto, in this Veneto region, right next to us. Uh, in the very clear sky days, we can see the Mount Grappa from which it, this distillate gets the name. Uh, every all, all this can be just synthesized in the in the dishes that Massimo Livan uh, uh, prepare when when you come at the Canova. Canova is the name of uh, the famous sculptor, okay? Which is which the uh, uh, which is right reflected to the museum, which is in front of us uh, in the in the uh, uh, noble uh, in the noble floor of the ancient Procuratia, which is right in front of our building. Uh, where Sisi, the princess Sisi, the, the, the wife of Franz Joseph, Emperor of Austria, has been living for six months. Oh. So in front of us, uh, beyond the street of uh, uh, the entrance, our ancestries, the, the, we do have a very wealthy neighborhood that make the, the great changements of the story uh, and the world, which is uh, which has been Sisi Emperor, uh, Sisi Empress of uh, Austrian Emperor. And so uh, nowadays you can visit the Courier Museum, for example, the Canova uh, Pinacotech, and you can also visit the, uh, the, CC, the CC apartments that are still there uh, because she has been living there uh, for six months. And so we can recall it back. And our windows face right these incredible apartments. That's so beautiful. Um, my dear friends, we're talking with Gian Matteo Sampieri, which is the general director of the Baglioni Hotel Luna in Venice. And, you know, I was thinking, because I love everything that it's made in Italy. Because you're good. It's, it's so tailor-made, so beautiful, all about design, the, the shoes and the purses and the food. And, and, and I love your wines. And, of course, the hotel business. How do you manage to do this beautiful atmosphere in a city like Venice that it's so famous and full of people? And at the same time, you give us this feeling that of exclusivity, of luxury. And I'm sure that's what you feel when you go into the hotel with the beautiful views and all the art and everything that you have to offer. Uh, well, first of all, passion and uh, curiosity and a lot of discretion uh, towards our guests, of course. Um, passion in doing things, because it's not that easy. Uh, in order to make all this happen and uh, to have possible uh, opportunity of experience, what we need to do is to have partners. Partners that talk and let us uh, guest experience at the very best this opportunity. So what we do, for example, is uh, to explore Venice on a different uh, way. For example, uh, renting boats, electrical boats nowadays, or ancient boats with with, uh, with a pilot, with a driven, with a captain driving uh, driving it. For example, in order to explore the lagoon. Or uh, we can uh, divulgate uh, uh, culture and uh, history by from from experts coming straight into your suite or in this beautiful tapestry room that we call Sala Arazzo in order to show you, for example, Causa Anglica, this incredible uh, letter with which Henry VIII has been written to the Pope and, and sorted out as a sort of break uh, with Christianity in 1532, causing the very break of uh, the Henry VIII with the Pope, uh, Clement VII, and the foundation of uh, the Anglican, the Church of England, uh, so new. Or still, uh, we can talk about uh, Marco Polo and his uh, testament. And this can be shown, of course, uh, these are not original documents, but they are a sort of replica, a clone of the original. Great partnership that we have with a local company. 
that has the possibility to do all this with great study bags. And uh, we can talk about uh, experiencing food and beverage in a particular restaurant or places. Uh, for example, in Burano, there has been an incredible uh, partner who has uh, who has got uh, who has rent uh, and bought a vineyard, and he uh, started now the production of the Dorona. Dorona is the golden wine, Dorona, and it was the wine of the Doges that was served at the Doges table, and it took several several decades in order to have a research on these uh, vineyards, and he got now the very the very the very wine which is a little bit salty because in this part of the world we are in a lagoon with the, the with the, the water from the sea so there is also salty deck so all these give us the possibility and the opportunity to be either discreetly next to the uh, most discerning traveler okay and make this destination not only as a luxury hotel itself but also as a, a, a higher stage opportunity to enjoy and experience this city. If you think about staying here for a couple of days, you will have a non-stop opportunity to experience all that. But if you decided to stay five or more days, you certainly can enlarge your array of visit. For example, visiting, going out of town and visiting, for example, the famous Chioggia, once called Clo the Roman Claudia, which is right on the sea, which is extremely similar to Venezia with a lovely, nice, opportunity of traveling through the lagoon with a lovely nice trip, or just renting a small car and going out to the uh, countryside of Venezia, or why not drive to Cortina in a couple of hours, you're there, the pearl of the <laughs> Why not? During, during, we are open all year round, and this is also possible, yes. Skiing a couple of days in Cortina, and then coming back to Venezia and enjoying this incredible uh, city in the lagoon. Well, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, winter time is my favorite time to visit this land. I you know. know I, now, I, now I live in the Lido. In the Lido is the, the this type of land between uh, the between the sea and the lagoon, and it's I've been there. I incredibly love nice it. during winter time. It's yeah. like on vacation being there in summertime because once you have been finishing your duties, you are at home and you have the beach from one side, you have the lagoon on the other side, a lot of green grasses, and uh, an incredible story that face you. Of course, in the lead, I've been there. And actually, I was there last year, but it was the fall, and I loved the mist and the mysticism. Mm -hmm. The weather was beautiful. And just to get around, not too many tourists, which... Uh, it, it feels good, all this space, but um, it's, it's, many, it's just such a beautiful city that you can go in the summer, in the spring, in the autumn, in the fall, yeah, whenever you feel like it, because it's really marvelous. Just before we finish, uh, I would love to know, what's your favorite dish on your favorite wine or drink? Uh, what makes you happy when you travel or in, in the beautiful hotel? Uh, once I have been uh, requested to to have, uh, once we were with uh, many chefs uh, and we were at the Rialto market. The Rialto market, by the way, is itself an experience. So Absolutely. it is suggested to anyone to come and see. It is. It, it takes place uh, six days a week uh, and it's a, a, an incredible experience to get there, especially early in the morning. Uh, I would certainly suggest uh, uh, some... Uh, some boiled fish for starting, okay? And then a lovely pasta with mussels, but uh, the, uh, the strong mussel that comes from the lagoon. Mm -hmm. And um, well, uh, then uh, as main starter, I would say um, a lovely nice sea bass, uh, either salty, uh, cooked uh, so with, with, uh, with the salt, or uh, just a simply oven with uh, olive, potato and tomatoes, which is a Mediterranean flavors. And, uh, uh, well, let me invite you. I will cook for you. Okay. Uh, oh, wine. Wine. The wine. Uh, we need, uh, well, uh, you know, uh, we could simply say Prosecco is fine. But for this particular food, I would say Malvasia. 
Okay, I love Malvasia. That would be Malvasia just... has a great history back with Venezia because from Memno Vasia, the Venetian called this wine coming from that island on the Aegean uh, Sea. And this has a great story back because even a famous man who was uh, Enrico Querini, noble man, he was taken the Malvasia to the Lofoten Island, but he got wrecked. And from this wreck, he got saved, but he came back through Germany, uh, Poland, Germany, and uh, Austria, and back to his uh, native uh, city of Venice with an incredible stockfish that here in Venezia is so-called bacala. And that is another story. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll have to have together some good malvasia, some uh, good fish and pasta. And uh, Gian Matteo Zampieri, the general manager of the Baglioni Hotel Luna in Venice, such a pleasure talking with you, listening to you, and learning about the history of the hotel and of Venice, the art, the, 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 the food, the the drinks, really a pleasure, and I hope to see you very soon. And I wish you the best. Uh, I'm so glad that you're open again and we're getting back to, to normal. We are all safe. Huh? So we are uh, in Venezia. We wait for you all. This tapestry on my shoulders is uh, a precious one, which is in Salarazzo. You can see everyone entering in the hall can see it. And it's very precious from uh, uh, early 1700 from Abu San, so a French uh, uh, textitor. And uh, there are many other things to be seen. And I will be delighted to dis let you discover all and to describe it to all. You Thank will be, you. You will be our guide. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Big Thank kisses to you. Thank you. Privileged to be here with you, Debbie. Bye bye. Arrivederci. Arrivederci.